Okay, welcome and good morning. We're going to the vlog today. Today I am one week and four, five days out. Anyway, it's a Tuesday morning. It's half past four in the morning and I'm going to start the day. So as you can see, there's dishes to put away. There's coffees to be made and I'm not actually going to have my coffee just yet. There's all the water to be. What's up guys? So today's going to be a vlog. I am one week and four days out. Anyway, it's a Tuesday and we're just another two weeks out from M Pro Classic. And as you can see, conditions definitely coming through pretty, pretty well. It's half past four in the morning. Uh, I have been waking up quite early. That's just my normal prep routine. Generally, year round, my wake up is around quarter past five latest. But in prep, I do tend to get in bed even earlier and then the wake up gets early anyway because one, you're lean, two, your sleep's a little bit more efficient and your sleep gets less no matter what you do. So we've got some dishes to put away, we've got coffees to be made. Uh, I am not fully clothed as I don't get fully clothed till in a little bit so I am going to show you some bits that I do. Um, we've got the water here that I am going to hydrate with, that's my water all accounted for for the day. Um, there's six litres there plus I have an additional litre uh, from like a morning drink and uh, just extra bits that I do have. So all water gets measured and all salt does actually get measured in little pots here. So these little pots behind me is my salt and meg salt that gets measured for the day. So I'm going to show you my food for the day. I'm going to show you my routine. I'm going to show you basically everything that I do for the prep. So we're going to get the day started. Um, I'm going to do some little bits in here, then I do have 10 minutes of hard posing, then I take a break, I hydrate more, then I will take my check-in that I have been doing every single day for the past five weeks. So that is posing practice in itself and when I pose at the moment, I pose like I'm on stage. That's one thing I want you all to take into consideration guys when you are posing in prep. Pose like you mean it and pose like you are on stage. So, good morning and let's get this vlog underway. Game time. Now, I'm just getting some more drinks ready and this is what I have before bed every single night. Now, in the morning, I tend to get some of my drinks and some of the bits ready just so stuff is ready for the day. And this is a massive game changer for joint health in general. So, guys, get on trainbygp.com, use my code Cooper10, get some money off and save your joints. It's super, super helpful. Now, another game changer for prep is this bad boy, Dream Sleep. You can use this year round, very safe profile panel. And honestly, it makes you feel so much better. Um, especially the Path HDP, for me, it makes a massive difference to my mood. And L-tryptophan really, really does relax you. So this bad boy has allowed me to uphold my sleep to a very high standard. But anyway, I will go over some more supplement bits um, as we go deep into the video and show you what I use and how I use it. Now, generally, generally people almost do like a sales pitch, but I always try and help and give you some value with everything that I do. So everything that I use, I definitely stand by. And one thing you'll have noticed, I have stayed with one company for now, years. It's not a sales pitch because I have been with one company for many, many years now. And if I didn't believe in the products, I wouldn't stay with them. So that's one thing to note, guys. I'm not just a loyal kind of person, but I truly believe in the brand and the supplements are literally best in the market. But anyway, I'll show you what I use um, and I'll show you all the fun stuff, uh, the daily routine, the food. Uh, but first, we've got Meg's coffee ready. Oh, there we go, cream of rice is uh, showing, but We've got Meg's coffee ready, and then I'm going to get mine ready now. And then I'm going to get some of the bits for meals one ready. Then I'm going to go and pose, do a couple of rounds, um, hydrate, weigh myself, and then more posing, work, and then a morning walk. So let's get to it. Right, so this is how the breakfast preparations are looking. So this is Meg's omelette and French toast getting ready, marinated more sourdough and avocado as part of her meal one. This is my veg that will go into my meal one and pre-workout meal. 
I like to air fry it a little bit, just so it's a bit crunchy. And that's my omelette. And that's my lemons that I will squeeze for my morning drink. And obviously the eggs. So we'll show you this. And this is my pot that I cook rice into. And I put in and I cover that for the day. I cook rice, I cook rice fresh every morning, this bad boy. Um, and then Meg cooks hers in this one because we have different portions and I like to be super accurate with what I have and when. So that is how it's looking just now. And then I'll show you the end product. Now, I've just weighed in and I have hit a new body weight low, which is definitely, definitely quite promising for where I am now because the peak week is almost upon us. And condition wise, I am almost ready. So I might show you some clips, however, I am looking very deflated and very, very flat. Uh, but it's where I need to be, to be honest. I'm not feeling too, too fatigued either. Um, I'm feeling just right, as I would call it. Um, so, plan of action now. I'm going to go upstairs, get stuck straight into my client work. It is now five past five. Um, so I do have some clients competing, etc. that I need to tend to. Um, that I always, always do, pretty much as soon as I wake up. Um, that way, everyone's got a replies pretty early and I actually like to get majority of my check-ins done before my clients wake up. That way, they're always waking up to the sponsors and I think that's quite nice. So, I'm going to go upstairs, put my red light on, um, keep hydrating. I've got my water here. Um, I generally like to get about a litre in before I pose and then I have only just added another coffee now in the morning. Generally, up until about three weeks out, two weeks out, I just have coffee pre-workout, but then when it gets to crunch time, I add in an additional coffee in the morning every single day, uh, both on rest day and training day. So I save my caffeine intake for as long as possible um, to then more so improve thy policies to a degree, uh, but just keep the energy levels moving forward and keep me switched on. So guys, let's get stuck into the day. There's my little coffee machine there. That's a present from my... Uh, Mum and dad in law, so yeah, game time, guys. Let's get it. Also, a little, uh, little plug vanilla way I so pro. We've got apple pie cream of rice and chocolate orange cream of rice, which is what I'm actually having this morning. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, in off season, it tastes amazing, but as you can imagine, in prep now, it's like having a treat every day. So, this prep's only been so easy. So easy. I had no cravings. Uh, I'm hungry, yes, but I like being hungry, it keeps me productive. So I think the longer I do bodybuilding, the more I enjoy every single process of it. So can't complain. Right, let's get to work. So this is how my current work setup looks like. We've got the cozy light, and then we've got the Lumi light that I keep on for the first 20 minutes of the day. So that is the workstation where I focus and service my people. Now, one best piece of advice I can give you is if you want productivity, make sure that your office is just for work. When I come in here, it's almost like a flip gets switched. And this is the only place where I actually work or study. But if I do study, I've actually got a second desk next to my work desk um, for my reading. So yeah, it's, uh, it's all divided. Uh, but I do find it helps me really focus. So find your workplace, don't work in random places. Make sure that you've got your places at home where you work, you relax, and then spend time with your loved ones and make sure it's all separated. Try not to work in just random places. Um, it's not the most efficient in my opinion.
to him and do the other side. So I'll do that with him. Right, that is posing, checking, my walk box stuff, and now we're gonna have the breakfast cooking. We've got the rice cooking, rice cooker, we've got the pans heating up, we've got the air fryer going, so you are gonna get to see all the shebang very, very soon. We've got the cream of rice in here that I'm going to give a quick stir. So we've got 125 grams of cream of rice with a little bit of actual rice in there as I do like to mix my cream of rice with actual rice as well. Uh, for me, it's just texture as well and that's just my preference. So we've got chocolate orange here. The key to a good cream of rice is always using a whisk. So we'll give this a whisk properly in a moment, but omelette cooking up right now. We've got the whole leg that needs to turn him down. That's going to go on top of the omelette. And we've got the peppers that are almost ready that are going to go into the omelette as well. And that makes bread for her cake of water. And then her French toast is getting ready and marinated here alongside of blueberries. So I'm a man of many talents. Rice cooker is on. It's on. So French toast for Meg is here. Some seasonings on there. We've got two whole eggs for Meg as well. This is my omelette. We've got some ketchup to go on there. This is my veggies for later, ready and weighed out with some kimchi, my salt, Meg's omelette, and then Meg's bread that is all toasted with avocado. And then we have got her other French toast. We're currently getting uh, some treatment in the air fryer. So that is how I get the breakfast ready. Cream of rice is currently in the freezer getting ready to get the final products in. So we're going to show you that right now. There we go. It's almost ready. So we are getting ready for breakfast. There we have the finished product. We've got one whole egg, 230 egg whites, 35 ISO Pro. That's the white chocolate hazelnut, it's amazing. We've got morning drink. We've got all my Train by JP health subs. We've got chocolate orange cream of rice tiny bit of rice and blueberries. Meg, 200 grams of sourdough, 25 grams of avocado, two whole eggs and 230 egg white with some veg in there. Two French toasts and then just normal toasted uh, sourdough bread. That is how the meal one looks. Now I'm not gonna lie, I definitely get a bit of a chef on every single morning. So I do like cooking, so it's quite enjoyable to create these meals in the off season and prep. And generally, the better your food looks, the better it tastes, and more effort you put into your food, <laughs> the more you'll chew it and better the digestion will be. So that is the final product. It's looking uh, pretty majestic, right? I mean, this is why it's so easy for me to stay on plan and not deviate from it because every meal I make is pretty epic. So yeah. Time to eat. Now, one thing I did not show you was my vacuum work and my planks that I do every single morning. So I do a set of planks and some vacuums. So that is non-negotiable every day. Honestly, being this close to the show, this is just like a, a divine meal. Especially this. I try to eat this as slow as possible because it does taste really good. And I do like to put effort into my food. My diet doesn't actually change that much prep or off season, just the amounts vary, which is definitely, definitely very appetizing at this point, this close to the show. Right, so that's breakfast done. And it was absolutely tremendous. Now, I'm going to sit for five minutes and then I've got some jobs to do. Getting my post-work meal ready and my intro workout ready as well. So you're gonna get to see some of that. Um, you're gonna see, you, pardon me, you are going to get to see the whole daily routine in what I do in detail, or as much detail as I can provide. So a lot of check-ins has already been completed. A lot of replies also completed on my morning walk. Um, I'll do a few more urgent replies just now to the guys and girls that are competing. 
um, and then I'll get stuck into the reminder of my jobs and then see what the wife's doing. How was your breakfast? Divine. You do a really nice job. Yeah? Enjoy it? It's lovely. What have you got to this morning? Um, once you finish your jobs, I'll finish my jobs. I'll do some more replies whilst you're doing your jobs. Um, and then we just the same stuff every day, isn't it? Yeah. Jobs, work. Um, I love it. Do you love it? Good. Yeah, you can tell she's enjoying that. <laughs> the choice of cream of rice for today is going to be the custard creme. And we are going to do 125 grams of this. And I'm probably going to put about 500 mils of water in it. So it's not too, too, too thick or too many. Start this. And the white chocolate is incredible. But I do love the sticky toffee and chocolate orange. To be honest, all the flavors at the moment are epic. So if you want some discount, get on the site, Kuba 10, you know the score. I'll show you the end product when it's done. Yes, I am using a bowl that I ate out of this morning. Um, so what? Come at me, bro. There we go. So this is going to be my intro workout, which again, does it change? For some reason this year, I've only made three changes in prep, uh, three dietary changes, and that has actually allowed me to get in contest condition. I haven't actually needed to make any further changes. Um, I have increased my steps here and there, but my diet's changed three times, and I think the main reason for that is I did do a pre-prep diet, and I actually started in pretty good shape. Uh, all in all, I think throughout this prep, I've lost around 20 pounds, 25 pounds max. Um, so I do think I've recomped quite a lot because I did do a health phase before I actually started this prep. But anyway, I'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. Um, 20 grams of MPS max, intro workout mixed with around 150, 200 mils of water. That is my serving of protein that I do have mid-session. So my pre-workout meal, I generally have at 10 to 12. And then I will drink this at around two o'clock. And then my post-workout meal is between four o'clock and um, around half past four. So generally that is what happens there. Now, pre-workout, pumpage. At the moment, I am not actually taking in uh, Prepare Pro. I am just having coffee. Um, the main reason for that is I am quite sensitive to stimulants because I haven't actually used much caffeine this year whatsoever. So for me, if I was to have Prepare Pro, it would blow my socks off. I have been using Prepare Pro sporadically, um, around 10 grams, just for like days. But today is push day, so I don't need the extra kick. So 22 grams of this, um, two gram overdose, and I do have five grams of creatine and glutamine as well with this. Now creatine is not only great when it comes to hydration, when it comes to performance, um, it's been tested and has so many studies. It's probably the most studied supplement, the most effective supplement as well um, that you can actually take in. But it's also an amazing nootropic. This is why I take creatine morning and night, alongside, sorry, morning and pre-workout, alongside of glutamine. So in my morning drink, I'll normally have glutamine, creatine, and some EAAs. Um, EAAs are just there for a bit of taste. Um, and then I'll have another serving of glutamine and creatine with my pre-workout drink that generally will, again, aid in hydration, improve gut health, because I actually have this drink um, straight after my post-workout meal. So it does help quite a lot. Uh, and now, moving on to my intra-workout carbohydrates, which is the performance fuel in a colada flavor. So I'm going to get my other bottle of water, get the funnel, and then I generally have between 30 up to 120 grams of carbohydrates in your workout. So that is what I generally always, always have um, year round. I never ever cut my intro workout carbs. The main reason for that is, is mainly performance. 
Uh, Dr. Scott Stevenson has put out so many, con so many podcasts and content uh, around actual studies on what intralocal carbohydrates can do for performance. And I have seen that first hand training with carbohydrates in the sessions and without. And even if it's something that's more so a, a, a mental thing, which it isn't because it's actually been backed by studies, um, it still will aid in your training performance. And again, with bodybuilding, your training is the priority. And that is always the goal when it comes to prep, is upholding training performance. So this is my pre and intra workout concoction. Um, I will show you my post workout as well. And as you can see guys, the intra workout carbohydrates, I have just under a liter and a half of water with them. Um, and I will always start sipping that and start warming up. Now the reason why I take labels off is because we do track our water intake and I don't want Meg drinking my stuff and she doesn't want me drinking her stuff. So that is the intro I got guys. I've got my lemons to squeeze next for my morning drink in the morning. Two lemons here and then we will go back upstairs in the office and get to work. So guys, you want your stuff, get on tradebyjp.com, cool with 10, you know the score. Right, so that's work block number two box stuff. And all the major work is pretty much completed now. So very happy. Um, all the check-ins, the big updates, the small updates are all done and applied to. Um, just got some form clips left to assess and get back to. So very, 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 very busy morning and a very productive one. Um, and that's just how I like it. It's actually half past nine now. So all in all, probably about four and a half hours work done already, uh, which is great. So probably got about an hour and a bit left to do. And then I might even get a time to squeeze a little nap in. But now it's time to go and get meal two ready. So game time. All right, so I've got my venison which is at the vacuum packed and sealed by my mum. We've got the air fryer going. We've got the chips. First, they need to get seared on the pan. And then we can see the end product when it's all done. Well, that is pretty much how we roll every single morning. That is my vacuum sealed venison. I normally get the steaks, and then my mum, thankfully, is amazing, and she actually vacuum packs it and minces it for me. So it works out pretty perfect. Now, my rice is also ready, so I'm going to take that out and then get it weighed into my pot. Now, at the moment, the total of the rice that I take in is 175 grams, which means because I'm deep in prep and hunger is up there, I actually add some extra water to it so that it's a little bit more volumized. So 175 grams generally comes up to about 700 grams cooked for me, which is a little bit more volume than I would generally do in a off-season setting. So this is why I am an advocate of weighing your rice raw always, because you can actually change the weight of your rice depending on how much water you add to it, which is very important for accuracy as you could be under eating or over eating your carbohydrates quite a lot because this same portion of rice, when I do high days, I can actually make into 400 grams and right now it's actually come up to 650 grams which is a lot more volume now that's how it looks in here gets covered up now and I cut rice and eat it fresh every single day The air fryer, and then the steak is 
going to go in to the pan for a couple of minutes. I do like it quite rare, so it's going to get a minute on each side, flipped, and then you'll get to see the end product. and cooked rice is washed and ready for tomorrow so top tip always always wash your rice and get the starch off it as it really makes a big difference for your digestion and you want your digestion to be optimized so the venison is all cooked the chips are getting ready and now we are going to add some veggies into the meal. So some of the kimchi that I've already weighed out this morning is going to get added to this meal. And there will be 20 grams of kimchi added to this one. And then we have got 50 grams of asparagus and 30 grams of mushrooms. So you get to see that soon. Right, so this is going to be a mate's meal. Number two, we've got my potatoes and veg cooking here. And my venison burger is also here now, which is ready to be consumed. So you will get to see the final finished product when it is all done and finished. Meg does the bulk cooking, but I do the most important stuff, which is making the food taste absolutely divine. So on meal two, we've got 15 grams of sauce, that's Melinda's truffle, and no added sugar, no added ketchup. It looks like a lot more, but trust me, 
it's actually 20 grams total, which is like five calories. 200 grams of potato, total of 100 grams of veg, 225 venison, 100 pineapple, and we've got Meg's meal, which is rice, venison, a bit of chicken, veg, and pineapple. It's the end product. Lovely. Time to eat. Right, so that's pretty much the morning wrapped up. I have just done a little bit of a write up for our post for our MK, MK Excellence coaching program. So our daily routine is pretty much the same every day. However, on a rest day, we do often make plans to go to the cinema and enjoy some time together. So I am gonna do a vlog for rest day to show you what we do on this Thursday. So you are gonna get to see a day in the life in prep, but the only difference really between prep and off season is we get to have more food in the off season. And sometimes we get to go out for food. Uh, but one thing I want you all to try and do is definitely make some time for your partners, whether you're in prep or not. Uh, me and Meg actually love going to the cinema. I leave both my phones in the car, my coaching phone, which is just for clients. Uh, no distractions on it, a personal phone, which is obviously the gym and everything else. So, I don't get any distractions, I don't get any calls, you know, I don't get any calls from the gym, I don't have managers ringing me, I don't have clients ringing me, texting me. Uh, you know, it's time for us to spend some quality time together and half the time we actually speak half the through this film and people probably hate us because we watch the film and we'll talk like we're at home. Uh, but that's our time together just to spend alone. And generally, even two hours can make a massive, massive difference. But anyway, I have got some clients replies to do now. Um, and I've actually got a couple of posts to make. I don't go on my social media until around 11, 12 o'clock, and that generally makes me feel so much better, both physically and mentally. I think social media is designed to actually drain you. But anyway, I'm not gonna dwell into that too much, but I've got some content to write up, I've got some client replies to do, um, and then you'll get to see the round of the day. I actually got a pre-workout meal ready, but you are gonna get to see that when I prepare it for both me and Meg on the panel to make it all nice and pretty. Uh, and I might even get a chance to get a nap in. I actually definitely will, because we are running on time and I'm in front. So, work to be done now, and then it's game time, nap time, and gym time, let's go. Right, pre-workout meal time. I did manage to lay down, couldn't nap unfortunately, but at least laying down with no phones and just relaxing for 20 minutes does the job. So, pre-workout meals, we've got 125 rice, 200 chicken, 75 veg, 100 pineapple, and Meg has prawns, rice and veg, and pineapple. So I'll show you them product. Got some sugar-free teriyaki in there as well. Pineapple, Nick Walker training, and that's Meg's meal as well. She's got prawns, rice, and veg. So that's going to go down, and we'll train in 60 minutes from here. So get him on. Right, that's pre-workout meal gone down. I've had my pumpage with creatine and glutamine as well and I'm definitely in a lot to train. Now, I haven't actually had a single bad session this entire prep, and I intend on finishing this way as well. And I think a lot of it comes down to your mental attitude and how you go into your sessions. If you go into every single session with a positive mindset and remind yourself of why you are in the gym in the first place and why you do this in the first place, I literally think it's impossible to have a bad session. Now, if you are overly fatigued or tired or you need a deload, you might not have a spectacular session, but that just means you might need a rest. But realistically in prep, you're always gonna have a degree of fatigue. But if you enjoy training, regardless of you being able to hit PBs or not, you still are gonna have a good time in the gym. I do, even when the sessions aren't as spectacular, and at this point they won't be. At this point for me, taking wins is literally matching my reps. So for me, the past few weeks especially, the goal has been going into the gym and being able to hit the same load and the same repetitions as I have done previously. And that has been a massive success for me because mentally it keeps me in a good place. And ultimately, I love training regardless. So no bad sessions for us ever because that's probably the only time in the day, it is actually the only time in the day, where we get to do something just for me. 
and it's the same with Meg. It's our time. So that time in the gym is special and as it should be for all of you. Now, less rambling on now. I'm probably going to put a podcast on. I've left my actual phone at home as I'm trying to spend much less time on social media. But I'm recording this on my client phone, which only has WhatsApp on my clients, uh, just to keep me away from distractions. So if they're a coach, I very much advise you to do that. It will keep your productivity levels much higher, uh, for sure. So guys, see you at gym, push day. Warm up just about done. We're gonna start with a lion cable Y raise. So you are gonna get to see training highlights today from push day. So we're gonna get stuck into them and I'll take you for the session as we go along. So let's get it. We've got Adam Bayer playing, for those of you who are asking what tunes they are. And it's absolutely banging, so you're in for the treat. So, part of full day of eating, we've got my intro. 30 grams of pina colada performance fuel. Keeps me fueled from workout and definitely allows me to perform much better. So start sipping this before the first working set. Okay. Sorry, bro. So, we're still going to put the hard sets in, and we're not going to take sets past failure, but we are going to go all the way there, especially now. This is going to be the last few hard sessions to get through uh, before we back off both intensity and volume a little bit more. So, train hard until you show. Don't back off too much. Right, so, moving on to a seated cable fly. Uh, I actually have been starting my chest work with a flying motion for a little while. And it's allowed me to keep my loading a little bit, a little bit safer, especially now in prep, and keep the intent exactly where I want it, which is on the chest. So, million and one ways to skin a cat, there's no set rules to this. You can always try out different methods, so, if you are struggling to even develop a good connection with your chest, try and start in with an isolation exercise, then move into compound work, and then switch it back after a little while of running it. Let's see how you get on. That actually felt really good. So we're gonna do my working set next. Generally, isolation work, take two to three warm-up sets max. Uh, compound work might be a little bit more, depending on where I am. Uh, but when I do take the warm-up sets, I don't take as many reps. I generally do between three to five reps. Then compound work, I even sometimes do singles as a warm-up, save energy from the main working set. So that's the way to go.
set all in all. Match the reps. Could have been a little bit tidy maybe at the end, but I should have felt quite good. Minus. Right guys, so as always, my mid intra concoction. So 20 grams MPS max, and I always drink this mid-session, so this goes down in one. In one. Meg's looking at me like I'm vlogging. Alright. Oh, beautiful. I actually love this flavour as well. It goes down a treat. Right, so this is gonna be my final warm-up set. So difference between isolation work and compound work, as you'll notice on this, I literally take a couple of reps and that is it. So get a position, get a brace in. Now, warm up sets, you get treated with the same intent as my actual working sets. Because the warm up sets is ultimately going to dictate your performance for your top working set. So, all the attention to that. Okay, come on. Right, we've got this all day, bro. Bye bye. Boom. Yes. Match reps actually. So absolutely buzzy. Game time. Game time. Now we're gonna use this today instead of the nitro chest press. As someone took ages on it, so we don't really want to wait. And it's a very heavy press as well. And today we somewhat want to stay super safe and use something lighter. So we opt for something easy. Yeah, I like it. Felt good. Felt safe. I'm going to film the back off for you just because I want to show you exactly how you should approach top set and back off set on machines like this that don't offer you ability to adjust resistance. So, your top working set, your first working set, I would always opt to work between 7 to 10. Then, your back off set, you want to drop the load appropriately to be able to get 12 to 15. So, that's the goal here. Uh, and that's generally the thought process behind the top set and back of set. Uh, you want to work in different rep ranges, not just targeting different fibers of your muscle, uh, but just getting most out of the machines that have more of an even resistance profile or are even a bit hard in the short and range, which is here where you're weakest. So yeah, that's the whole that's the whole kind of point. So yeah.
So, as I said, top step back off. First set was seven, that was 13, which is absolutely ideal. So, next will be the dip. Let's get it. Hi right, guys, so next exercise, machine dip. Um, this is definitely a great piece and it does offer you an adjustment in resistance. So we're gonna do two sets here, um, top set back off uh, style. However, the rep range is gonna be kept between eight to 12 repetitions. So game on. Oh yes, oh that was a decent set, very very decent set. Now, the best thing that you can do is always control your centrics. Even at last rep, as you could see, it was a final rep, but I still managed to still get a very productive eccentric. Um, that is the portion of the rep that, in my opinion, stimulates the most growth. So control your centrics, always. Next exercise, overhead cable extension. Um, this machine is actually quite handy. Uh, one session we've got the lying incline cable overhead and this session we've got the machine. So some nice variety in place. Uh, now overhead movements for triceps in my opinion are king. So I always prioritise overhead exercises for tricep development. After a dip. Compound first always. Right. Yep. beautiful set now you want to really capitalize on the stretch here and spend some time there really get into that deep deep length and range you want to really do that across any exercise that you do get the biggest bang for your butt that way right that one down right guys so moving on we've got machine lateral raise so we're going to do three sets here again prime ability to adjust resistance set one setting one Set two will be setting five, set three will be setting three. And the goal is to try and hit roughly the same rep range with the same loading, just adjusting resistance as we go along. So I do like to start with a lateral variation and then finish in a lateral variation as well. Um, again, extra delt volume, you can never be wide enough and you can never be big enough. So we're trying to get Dennis James width.
beautiful sun. All right, guys, so final exercise for today's push day. Well, final. I don't really count calves, so this is a final exercise. Uh, we are getting some calves after, but ain't nobody want to see anyone training calves. It's boring. Um, anyway, push down. Use an EZ bar. Push in a more of a comfy position where you can have a slight semi supination at your wrist and take your width, shoulder width apart. So, this is always my preference for a push down variation. So that's the session wrapped up, but now we've got an in-person check-in with uh, Terry and Hen. So we're going to see what they're looking like and decide if Hen's going to compete this year or not. So we shall see. Yeah, hit some, yeah, hit some shots. Very nice. You actually look like a proper bodybuilder now. It's class. Love to see it. Yeah. Inside? Yeah. Next year it's definitely on, man. Let's have a look at the back. Yeah. Very nice. Just need to make sure you nail in the pose in practice now. Yeah. And back that spread. Awesome, man. And open up. Beautiful. Get in there, man. Next year, we're going to get on stage. We've done the photo shoot prep, so you're prepped and ready for it now. You know what to expect. Right. Love it. So, generally, with all clients, like I've done with Terry, we always do a mock prep before an actual prep. Now you've got an understanding and idea of what actual dieting would feel like. And obviously we didn't get quite stage lean, but it gives you a bit of a taste for it. Yeah. So next time you actually diet and do get stage lean, it's not going to be a shock to system where it's like, oh my God, like this is, you know. It was a good warm up. Yeah, it was a very good warm up. Yeah, 100%. That's the whole point of doing it. So smashed it, mate. Well done. You look class. Hands next. IFBB Pro, Henrietta, let's go. All right. That's it. Some density there now. Yeah. It looks like it's stuck on now. Got a lot more pop everywhere, I love it. Let's go, let's go. Hold it. Try not to lean back as much. So that maybe to tilt forward. Oh yeah, like sitting back. Come towards me, come towards me. No. Lean your body towards me. That's better, yeah. You need to work on that 100%. Yeah, good. Yeah, because you almost like lean back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're like, so you pop, but then you lean back. So you make yourself like, so if anything, you need to, Come in a straight line. That's, do you see what I mean, Terry? Yeah. Right, relax and go again, but, and come forward. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Now she's not like leaning back, because the second, the second she leans back that way and leans her body over that way, she makes herself look like basically less shapely than she is. And do this. Do, do, the, do the previous one, so I can see that. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You see that? You see, you see that, difference now? Difference yeah. it, that's ridiculous. It brings, that middle, you bring your middle in as well. it brings all the midsection in. Yeah. But she, you can still get a lot more from that. 100%. Hip, 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 and then turn, twist, and then hit that way. You're going to have to practice that a lot. Yeah, okay. Right, front shot. Do you see what I mean? 
Yeah, back, back shot. Let's go. And transition. Boom. Oh yeah, there we go. Pull your posing bikini up a little bit more. It needs to sit a little bit higher. Higher? Yeah, higher. There. That's right, do you see what I mean, Terry? Yeah. Push back, kicks back more now. See how much bigger glutes look? Yeah. Her, both, her practice bikini and a normal bikini doesn't... Doesn't show that. No. So when it needs to be sitting, both, it needs to be sitting across here. Because in that way, you're going to get to see all of the glute that you've built here as well. And you'll see the difference. Yeah. yeah. The difference is ridiculous. Push your hips back a little bit more. There we go. Right. Hips up and back. Chest up, chest up, and then back. Beautiful. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. The progress she's made is crazy. Epic. Yes. Definitely work on that. Massive difference. Yeah. Right, so progress made with Hen has been ridiculous. Um, she has probably added about, let's say, probably like ten pounds of muscle. Wow. It's yeah, it's it's <laughs> awesome. Crazy. It's awesome. Um, she needed to add a lot of density in comparison to the top girls when I was competed, and I definitely think we've done that. But question for the prep is, we could prep from here, but you need to be mentally 100% in for it. If you're not, I'd rather wait. Because I'm not the type of coach that's going to be like, you've got to compete. I'd rather you be mentally 100% ready for it. Like mentally. That's an overview. You'll get to find out. You'll get to find out one day. So check, check the socials. All right, guys. So that is session wrap up and some posing done with Hen. She looks epic. You can probably see some transformation pictures off her on my Instagram. Um, she's definitely done a, an immense job. Um, seven months of improvements and just a complete turnaround in terms of the muscle and density so immensely proud of her. Now I'm going to pose, eat and then go on some bed um, and client replies as well. Because clients are waiting, they need tending to so game on. So just did some posing with the wife, the main man, this year's coach, quite literally as we did, both did it pretty much together. Uh, I think we'll always probably prep like this, 100% uh, even uh, in the future, obviously I will have support from someone but she's always going to be someone that has a lot of input, she knows me inside out and she knows when to make the right calls as well. Now very flat but also much leaner last time and what am I? What did you say? What did you say? Uh, yeah, so almost game time. Right, food time guys, let's get it. There we go, we've got my prawns, cream of rice. Got 125 cream of rice, eight of strawberries, as I actually have some more fruit from the last meal. 350 prawn, 30 kimchi, and Meg has her post-workout meal, which is more than mine at the minute. Yeah, she's eating more than me. Terrible, right, so. This is the post-workout meal at the moment because I have whey before bed and I limit myself to whey twice per day because if I have it more, I feel like I'm cheating on my diet. So I'm gonna tuck into this and then get on some bed after. So we're back home, been greeted by the doggy. Uh, now, time for more client replies and a bath. So I'm gonna head upstairs, reply to the clients and get in the bath and then it's time for meal five then recovery boots and me and Meg time. So stay tuned for the remainder of the day. Both of our meals ready. I have got 225 grams of chicken, 50 grams of rice, 150 grams of veggies. Meg has her prawns, 75 grams of rice, 25 grams of avocado. So she actually has more food than me, fun. Uh, but needs must. Uh, we've got a little bit of calorie-free GQ sauce and some Melinda's truffle sauce, which is also pretty much calorie free. So I generally always put a lot, of, a lot of effort into our food. The main reason for that is we live this lifestyle year round, right? So it needs to be enjoyable. And me and Meg love us food. So I make it tasty. And for me and her, this is why prep is so easy and it's so easy for us to actually adhere to the plan because 
we make it easy to adhere to. Now, food time, and I'll give you more of an update later on, but this is our time now to chill and just relax. So, see you later. Right guys, so that is the current last meal. We've got 35 grams of whey. We've got a little bit of frozen fruit in here. We've got fruit, cream of rice, oats, and whey. We've got a total of 70 grams of whey, 30 grams of oats, 30 grams of cream of rice, and 170 fruit um, all together. Then my PM tablets right here with my join in. And that is a nightcap, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, and I will see you again soon on the rest day. Good night, Spain. Good night.